Hey guys, it's Taku. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. As you can see, we are in a bit of a new setup. I have officially moved to a new apartment and I really like it here. I think in many ways, at least in terms of space, it's a big upgrade. I think the set also looked a little bit nicer, but I'll have my own videos for that later. Today we are talking about The Stranger by the Shore, which is a summer 2020 film that came out just last year. And it's like yesterday, I think it was put on Funimation. Funimation has announced that they will dub the film and that I believe the dub comes out today if I'm mistaken so while I am here talking about the sub mainly uh, the dub is probably going to be a decent dub it's got Josh Greeley in it as well as Justin Briner for the lead so I safe to say it's probably going to be good so The Stranger by the Shore also known as Umibe no Etranger is based off of the manga of the same name and it is about Shun Hashimoto who is an aspiring novelist who recently had moved out to live uh, far off in the kind of the summer island of Okinawa. And he is here because he has pretty much uh, cut ties with his family after openly admitting that he is gay. The other main character of this story is Mio Chibana, who is at the start of this film, a young high school student who is pretty reserved and it's because his parents both passed away. He doesn't really make friends well. Uh, everyone kind of looks down on him, at least thinking that he's small and kind of helpless. And that really makes it tough when he meets Shun for the first time on the beach. Shun finds his eyes wandering towards Mio throughout his daily life, especially when he sees him kind of sadly sitting there by the shore by himself. And while he would normally kind of shoot his shot at these types of things, Shun also has a very low self-esteem after kind of being outed as a kid and then of course being kicked out by his own family. Through a small seaside restaurant that Shun's aunt runs, the two start to become closer together until the day that Mio tells Shun that he is going to be moving to an orphanage on the mainland. Land. This is also a cutting point for the film where three years pass and of course Mio comes back. He is now three years older, he is out of high school, 20 year old, and he openly admits his feelings to Shun. While it seems pretty out of the blue, I think Shun really wanted this to happen as well. But of course, Shun is also a different person now. I mean, three years have passed. His novelist career kind of took off for him, so he's a lot busier than he thought he'd be. But more than that, he's struggling with a lot of commitment issues to other relationships and then also struggling to accept his own sexuality and whether that is okay, whether that they, he can even find happiness in dating another man. The film is a lot shorter than I thought it'd be. I was actually thinking it'd be like over an hour or two, but it is actually just under an hour at like 59 minutes. But that makes it a pretty quick and light run. I think you could share this with a lot of your friends or family and they would hopefully like it because it is a very pretty movie. Studio Hibari is responsible for the animation and it's just a very lovely aquatic seaside movie. I am a sucker for those kinds of settings to be honest and so when I saw the light colors and kind of watercolor like washes of the backgrounds, I really gravitated towards the visual style of this movie. I have a Chirashi poster of it, like one of those little Japanese film posters, and it's hanging somewhere in this room, but needless to say that the visual style of this film is quite aesthetically pleasing. It's a very beautiful movie, even if there's not a whole lot of action. The details are in the setting, the soft flower designs and the kind of chipped paint, the wear and tear of this seaside or uh, portside town. So I think altogether, it's just a very charming movie. The characters are also very easily likable. Mio is this very young spirited outgoing he's very vibrant he is the kind of loud and adorable one in the relationship and I think a lot of people are going to obviously like him because he is so um, kind of free-spirited especially after those three years pass and he thinks he's an adult now because I mean for all intents and purposes he is but there's still a lot about human emotions that you know he needs to dig within himself and then also try to understand for others but for some people you know like coming out is a really big deal and that is also one of the driving conflicts of this when Mio returns from his three years and expects Shun to be all over him and that the relationship can be perfect and set sail and it's far from that. And then when it comes to Shun, I just, oh my gosh, I actually feel attacked watching this movie. I really, really gravitated towards Shun's character. I love how he is just such a kind of messy person. When I say messy, I mean like personality wise, like he's such a goof. He wants to look good in front of people, like know what he looks like he's doing, but of course he just fumbles every chance that he gets. 
I love it how he is an aspiring and you know fairly successful writer, but he really stumbles at putting into words his own feelings and emotions. It's one of those interesting dynamics where his occupation shapes his character in a really fascinating way that I almost wish the film had more time to explore. But yes, our resident clumsy gay novelist is a klutz at everything he does, and I think that watching him fumble through the movie until he comes across kind of the lifestyle that he wants to live is one of the best takeaways from this film. Chun's struggle to accept his own uh, sexual identity along with Mio finding out what the adult world is like are two of the most well-developed and naturally developed conflicts in this film. So even if you are not a huge fan of shonen Ai romance, you will probably still enjoy some sort of the occupational aspect of the characters or of course, you know, their personality. There's just lots to love in this movie. This movie is just all about love and I hope that it's one of those films that people are going to talk about and share for a long time to come because again it is just a nice sweet little romance and at the end of the day you have a very respectful very tender very sweet and very cute relationship that has a rough start but eventually sets sail in the best way possible. I just want to thank everyone who worked on this project because having a film like this for in my life and then just that I can share with others it really means the world because representing Presentation matters and of course this film is perfect for it. If I had to put a number on it I would give The Stranger by the Shore an 8 or a 9 out of 10 just because I really love the characters and the relationship and the art is very very pretty. I just love the visual aesthetic of this whole show and of course the seaside setting is going to be a win for me always. But what did you think of Umebe no Entranger? Please let me know down in the comments below. This film has been highly anticipated. At least it has been my highly anticipated film of like the whole past year. I was waiting every single month just seeing if someone would announce a license for it. And I was really not expecting Funimation to be the ones to get it. But I'm so glad that they did because it probably means we can expect a Blu-ray release of this within the next six months, six to eight months. And of course the manga volume one is coming out by a I believe Seven Seas at the end of this month, the first volume under the name of Seaside Stranger. So please look forward to it and pre-order it if you haven't already. Alrighty guys, before I just ramble more and more about how much I love this movie, I'm going to end things here. Thank you so much for joining me on this summer film spotlight. I realized that I picked kind of an odd one because I broke my trend of doing a physical release, but with the movie having just released yesterday, I felt it more timely to talk about this film now and talk about the Night is Short Walk on Girl next week. So thank you so much for watching this Summer Film Spotlight. Please look forward to next Saturday for the next one. And till next time.